what's the fundamental difference between private property and public property well for me it's gonna be this with private property due to the fact that it usually needs to be backed up by some agreement protocol in the form of a contract not necessarily a written contract but it could be an implied one and this form of protocol although has a nice means of protection and is useful for research and other things that keep revenue and functionality and the day-to-day -day operations a lot more simple it limits the checks and balances of who can take the property whereas with public property there's an unlimited or almost unlimited amount of checks and balances there is a higher amount of transactions for this property in terms of revenue if any inequity happens or any assumed inequity for a third party so really it all boils down to checks and balances and the priority of the third party in terms of polycentric law and how this from bottom to top third party really decides its goals is one more susceptible for opting for a checks and balances system or is it going to advocate that a little bit less that's all I gotta say I'll make another video later on this day